Hello, everyone. Thank you for um, joining us for this month's webinar. Our topic is Healthy Eating on a Budget, and our presenter is Robin Glock. She's an RN and a health coach with Strategic Health Services. Robin? Hi, thank you everybody for joining in for today's webinar. As Dawn mentioned, it is about healthy eating on a budget. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, how we can create healthier food plans with saving uh, money and time. So just basically talking a little bit about healthy eating, some basics of food safety, some meal planning and smart shopping tips, reviewing label and shelf information, and then preparing healthy meals and snacks. So first we'll talk about what is healthy eating. Um, the three principles of healthy eating are balance, variety, and moderation. Using balance when eating refers to choosing the right mix of foods from all of the food groups to ensure that your body is getting enough, but not too much, of the vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, um, that your body needs to function properly. So balance can be achieved daily by choosing the recommended servings um, of the major food groups, which is the fats, um, <clears throat> excuse me, which is the, the grains, the vegetables, the, the fruits, the um, dairy or um, milk, uh, and then the protein, which can be um, meats and sometimes even beans. And then making sure that you're not consuming too much from the other um, groups, which is the fats and oils, and then also the sweets or those refined sugars. So when you're um, looking at variety when eating, it means not only choosing foods from each of the food groups, but also choosing a variety of foods from within each of those groups. So different groups, um, different foods within each group are good sources of different nutrients. So if you're looking, for example, maybe at the vegetable, um, the leafy greens like spinach and kale are a good source of vitamin K, which is necessary for proper blood clotting. But if you are to focus more on the orange or the yellow vegetables like carrots or squash, that's a good source of vitamin A or beta carotene, which is important for immune function, eye, and skin health. So it's just about trying to think of ways to get um, more variety, maybe a rainbow of colors um, on your plate each day. And then moderation is showing that all foods do fit in. Try to moderate, not eliminate. So it's a principle of eating where your body um, is getting the right amount of food that it needs and you're not overeating. So a lot of that is portion control and then also recognizing your hunger and fullness cues. It's important to um, listen to your body and understand when you're truly hungry um, versus when you're eating out of habit, um, out of boredom, maybe when you're stressed or tired, um, or if you're feeling full and just finishing the food that's on your plate because um, it's a habit or that's kind of how you were raised to, to continue to eat until your plate's empty. So listening also to that hunger cue within yourself and saying, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not hungry anymore, I'm now feeling full and I, I stop eating. So a lot of that um, can help that moderation and in, in, in figuring out how to not overeat. So one thing that I like to show in the screen here shows this choosemyplate.gov um, it's a USDA website. It's a great online resource, um, and it's a tool that allows you to see whether you're getting a diet that's balanced with a good variety um, and also appropriate moderation. So if you would go to choosemyplate.gov, um, it's a, a great resource that you can do not only for recipes, but you can go to the Super Tracker, and if you have um, some time to explore the Super Tracker, it gives you the ability to put your foods in and it lets you know, you know you're kind of lacking here on new, these nutrients. You could do a little bit better um, in this area. It's very similar to um, like a MyFitnessPal or a Lose It app, but it gives you a little bit more information about the nutritional intake. Now we'll just touch lightly on some basics of food safety. So if you're on a budget, you're trying to make the most of your of your money and, and shop wisely, you're going to want to be careful when you're at the grocery store. So you want to try to avoid those rusted, dented, or, or bulging cans. Um, sometimes a little ding is, is nothing, but if you're looking at you know, the contamination aspect of, of canned goods, you definitely want to avoid those that have a, a big um, dent in them. 
Um, also look for proper seals on the jars and vacuum packed products because if you're checking it in the store, um, you're, you're going to save yourself some time and money when you get home and find that you can't use the product and then it has to be thrown away. And then checking the expiration date to ensure that you're not grabbing an expired product, bringing it home, and then wasting money by having to throw that away. So grab sometimes from the back. They tend to push the, the things that are going to expire sooner to the front of the of the shelves. And so that's something that you know you may want to think about when you're when you're shopping. Another thing is food storage. So making sure that you are putting things away um, right away when you get home, the refrigerator, freezer. Um, you also don't want to have um, you know, a rule of thumb is to, to kind of not put your your meats lower. Um, they should be down lower from your fruits and vegetables because you don't want any cross-contamination there. And then you run the risk of having to throw that away and then it, that it becomes um, not good to eat. So storing those raw meats below your fresh vegetables and fruits is, is always a great way to, to do that in the refrigerator. Then, you know, making sure also you have proper sanitation, that you are washing your hands and all the surfaces in between um, cooking and during the preparation process. And then if you are, you know, making foods, you want to check the internal temperature, especially um, when you are reheating foods or if you are cooking meat. So sometimes having a food thermometer is not a bad idea. Um, and if you would be interested in knowing the, the proper temperatures for food safety, there is um, information on the um, Choose My Plate gov, but there's also a, a specific site that's foodsafety.gov that gives you an uh, array of different temperatures for different things. Basically for leftovers, they're saying try to in, internally heat that to 165 degrees. When you aren't sure, if you've had some leftovers in the fridge for a while and you're not sure, just follow your gut and the rule of thumb is usually three days and, and toss it away. So now we've talked a little bit about healthy eating and some basics of food safety. We're going to go right into plan ahead before you shop. So if you're thinking about planning ahead, it's, it's really going to save you in the long run. It's important to know, first of all, what your food budget is. So determine how much money you are wanting to spend each month and then even ultimately each time you shop. So having that food budget, um, a lot of it should be based on the number of people that you are feeding in the house. Um, but also the number of meals that you're able and can cook at home. So if you're eating out less often, um, you're going to spend less money. So if you're thinking about planning your weekly meals, if you're planning those meals, not only are you doing that for being a cost-effective way, but it also can be a great strategy for staying on track nutritionally and making some better choices. So if you are thinking of meal planning, one thing that you can do um, is you can um, try to do a little bit of meal prepping and, and thinking about things that you can plan as the week goes on. You should make a list. Always try to be prepared. Have a list of things that you need for each meal that you want to cook um, as far as the ingredients. And also, um, if you're running out of things, you know, having a list on the refrigerator or on the kitchen counter can be very helpful because you're jotting things down you know, as you're running out of them so you're not I'm going to make several trips in and out of the store during the week. If you can avoid extra trips to the store, which comes along with this whole you know, planning ahead, you are going to be less likely to spend more money because the, every time you go in, you run the risk of you know, making extra purchases and buying things that you, um, you may not need right now or, or need at all. So that can be a very cost-effective tool is just eliminating the number of times you're going to the store. Also think about foods that you already have. Try to account for the foods that are in your pantry, your refrigerator, your freezer, and then make sure that you are incorporating those into recipes, especially if you think that you know, they're going to be expiring or spoiling soon. You don't want to waste it, so try to incorporate it into a healthy meal that you prepare for the week. And then checking the store flyers, that is a very great way that you can um, prepare ahead think about what's going to be on sale, and get some recipe and some meal ideas going. So for looking at some, some meal planning tips, one of the first things is to make it easy. Um, we're all pretty busy these days, so trying to plan meals that are easy to prepare can be helpful. So think about ways that you can um, use maybe the slow cooker or a crock pot. 
Um, also, think of ways that you might be able, like we talked about meal prepping, so if you have a few things that are already prepped out and in bags, you can pull them out the night ahead. Um, with the weather changing, grilling is a great option, so you know, maybe pull down some boneless, skinless chicken breasts, that way they're ready to go on the grill when you get home from work. So try to think about ways that you can make it easy, especially if you're busy and you know there's going to be certain days of the week that you're, you're really booked up. Try to incorporate variety. If you can increase the variety in your meals, um, you know, it definitely helps for you not to get burnt out or bored eating the same thing. Not only if you, you know, can add a little bit of variety, you're also adding more nutrition as well. So if you're, you know, shifting and, and changing up the way and the style you're eating, maybe having, a, you know, extra vegetables or things, that can really help just boost your nutritional um, intake as well. So sometimes, you know, if you if you like to try new recipes, maybe Google, you know, find something online or make something out of a new cookbook that you have. Maybe try to do that, you know, once a week if possible. Again, back to the used foods that you already have. It's just don't forget to check your pantry. Um, it prevents you from overbuying, duplicating products, uh, wasting um, money, or potentially even, you know, having something spoil, and and that would be. Um, you know, another way that you would be wasting money. And then planning for leftovers. So when you're putting your meals together, um, think about how, you know, depending on how much you make, you may be actually helping yourself by incorporating um, a large meal that you've cooked into maybe using that again another day of the week if you know that you're really busy and you're not going to have time to cook, or just budgeting it out for the rest of the, for a few days that week for lunches that you can take to work. So you're, um, you know, being more cost effective, avoiding, you know, maybe eating out at lunch and making bad choices. So I do have a lot of people that I coach that are meal prepping on Sundays, and that's something that, you know, you're taking the time to, you know, make your list, you know, map out what you're going to be eating, you know, maybe for that week, and then, if possible, getting some of it prepped and ready to go on Sunday so you don't have to do so much during the week when you're more busy. Now we'll take a look at um, smart shopping on actually the next two slides, and so we're going to talk a little bit about how um, you need to plan to shop less often. So if you're going to the store once a week, you know, twice a week max, you're going to spend less money than if you're going more often during the week. And just like, you know, I just talked about, I know for myself, if I go into the store and I'm supposed to go in for one thing, I, I very rarely come out with just that one thing. So if you're really trying to, you know, focus and, and stick with a budget and, and make some better food choices, that's a great way to, to do that. So if you can stick with a list, as well, that's something to think about. So not only are you not going in as often, but you have a list, and you're sticking with that list. If you've made it, take the time to stick to it. So if you're going to buy items um, that are less nutritious, that's that's when it's going to happen. If you're not, you know, focusing on on what you've mapped out for yourself, and so it's just about having a little bit of an idea of you know where you want to be in the store, and avoiding those areas that you know, can, can bring in some, some deviation. And that, a lot of times that's at the checkout line, too. You have to kind of talk yourself out of those, um, those purchases um, that they've, you know, put right there that are not usually healthy. And then just kind of sticking to, um, you know, what you need for the recipes and things that you want to prepare. Avoid shopping when you're hungry. I think a lot of us have been there. It's more difficult to stick to the list and, and healthy choices when you go into the store hungry. Um, and then avoid shopping with children. And that's not for everybody. Some kids are, you know, amazing, and they, they don't want anything in the store. Um, but there are times when you have um, more difficulty sticking to your budget and your list when kids are with you because, um, you know, they're, they're marketing and, and they're showing things at eye level to kids that can, can rope them into and, and you into to getting more things that you don't need. So do look for coupons. So you know, if you, if you are looking at ways to save on everyday items that you're using, check your Sunday paper, you know, the, the mail that you may get, you know, flyers once a week. Um, even online or specific stores will have coupons. Use those um, if you're, you know, wanting to save a little extra money. A lot of places are doubling the coupons up to a dollar. Um, try to remember that even with a coupon, if you can buy the store brand or an off brand, you may find that it's still cheaper than, than you know, using the, the name brand product with the coupon. And 
if you don't have that item on your list but you have a coupon for it, try not to buy it. If you're not, if you're not going to use it, if it's something that you are just purchasing um, because you have the coupon, you know, a lot of times it's, it's just something that you would normally not be using and it can just use up your normal budget for food that week. And try not to spend too much time um, and gas money driving around store to store to store to, um, to use coupons that you have. So a lot of times if you are focusing on one or two stores, um, you'll find that you're, smart, you know, you're shopping a little bit smarter because you're not running everywhere. Um, and a lot of times if you're looking for you know, those, those grocer, um, they have bonus loyalty cards, that's a great way to save money in the store on top of coupons. And um, another thing that you can think about is maybe trying like an Aldi's or a, an off, um, off of the, the beaten path, you know, grocery store where you can find some great deals, especially on produce. So another thing to consider is using that label information um, and that shelf information, just reading the signs, knowing that you're getting, you know, your best. Um, your best deal that you are paying attention to, you know, maybe they have in-store best buys that week and just finding some ways to save some extra cash. So for looking at label and shelf information, you know, you want to go in and you want to understand that um, most things we're going to have uh, nutritional facts on them, they're going to have the expiration date or the best buy date, and even um, some of the labels and shelving will have, like we said, those special deals and special buys. So you want to make sure your food's fresh, and that's going to be looking at that, that expiration date. If you are buying things that are very close to an expiration date and you're not using them right away, that's a potential for you to waste money. So again, I know it, at my grocery store, undoubtedly the yogurts are always expired. So I always have to kind of dig and, and look around, but I've, I've done it before and I've wasted money where I you know, bring them home, I don't realize they're, they're right near the expiration date and then you know, I, I end up throwing them away. So it's just something to think about. Again, you know, thinking about that, that unit price and the nutrition fact labels, just giving yourself an idea of you know, what you're eating and, and what you know, it's, it's most, mostly going to be made up of. So what are the serving sizes? You know, are you really watching your sodium intake? Are you taking a look at, at that information and just trying to do some comparison of products? So when you think about the unit price, it refers to the cost of a food item per standard. So it's the cost per ounce or per pound or per pint. And basically, you're doing some comparison. You're using the ability to say, well, where am I going to get the most bang for my buck? And if you look at this example here, it's a good example of showing how, you know, when you're looking at things in, in different quantities, the 6 ounces versus the 12 ounces, you can see that after you figured out what it costs per quart, you know where your better value is. And a lot of times, that's what it's all about. Is, and you're probably doing this and not even realizing that you're doing it. Um, a great place to see this in full force is at the larger, um, like Sam's Club and Costco, those places, very well marked. Um, and you can really find what you're paying you know, per ounce or pound or serving. The nutrition fact label, you know, that's important, as the name implies, to give you the nutrition information. Um, also can tell you the ingredients and the servings per container. Look at those servings because a lot of times you'll be eating, for instance, this can of soup. Um, you know, if I, if I open up a can of soup, you know, chances are I'm going to eat that whole thing. And, and if you don't notice that there's two servings in there, you're not doubling. You're not, you know, taking that uh, nutritional information to the correct level, especially if you are trying to do some comparison. And you can see just with the example on the screen that if you're watching, you know, your sodium intake, you're trying to figure out, am I getting enough, you know, fiber in my diet? Being able to understand the difference between, you know, the two and comparing the labels, you know, will give you a little bit more nutritional information, help you stay on track, and and make some really healthy, um, good choices. So get familiar with your nutrition labels, know those, you know, food ingredients, and do some comparison. Because um, you will be surprised when you start to actually measure out and, and look at the, the different serving sizes, um, you know, portion control, and what you're actually eating, um, you know, based on, the, on those informations that are available to you. So here's some grocery store tips. One of the big things is avoid the junk and snack foods. You know, we talked about making a list and sticking with it. But if you think about junk food, the candy, the sweets, uh, the bakery section, all those are just refined sugars and fat. 
and they are added cost to your food budget, but also if you are budgeting really wisely, they may take the place of more nutritional food and stuff that may actually be better for you and, and keep you on track with a healthy eating goal. So one way you can limit your temptation is just avoid those owls altogether, um, and especially at the, at the checkout counter where they're sort of lots of different stands available to you, just really focusing on saying, you know, I don't, I don't need that, it's not a necessity, it's not something that um, adds any nutritional value to my daily intake. Another thing is avoiding those convenience foods. You're going to pay a little bit more for the prepackaged, prepared um, meals, the, whether they're frozen or fresh. If you're buying, you know, vegetables with sauces and things that are pre-sliced and pre-cut, you may find that it, it's more expensive. So if you can buy um, in bulk or buy whole foods such as you know the the fresh or frozen vegetables without the extra you know sauces and and such on there you'll find that you'll you'll spend a little less money when you're shopping think about the store perimeter I'm sure everybody's heard this you focus on the outskirts of the store is where you're going to find the more fresh whole and unprocessed foods like the fruits and the veggies the eggs meat and dairy focusing less on the inside, which is prepackaged and processed. And then also looking for generic brands or even the store brand. Um, they have the same nutritional value. A lot of times they, they taste the same, and you'll find that they're a much better value cost comparison. And then if you're thinking about just some food group best buys, you know, when you're making purchases, um, you want to think about, you know, maybe that bread in the, in the grain group, look for whole grain products, you know, brown rice, whole grain pasta, um, it has extra fiber, vitamins, minerals, and right now everything's marketed, um, you know, and it's marked, and it wants you to, they want you to purchase their product, and the packaging will say that it's 100% whole grain. So you want to, you know, definitely, you know, make some smarter choices and get some of the better buys, um, and you'll be able to see, even just going through the food, you know, flyers, what your, your better options are. Fruits and vegetables, um, you're going to find better deals on those when they're in season. So you may find, you know, great deals on berries in the spring, and then in the fall you'll see that, you know, the apples and the squash and different things are in season. So they're definitely going to be available to you with not only better taste, but also at a better price. And then if you're shopping for meat and poultry, you may find that it's cheaper to buy a whole chicken and cut it up. Um, you may find that if you are cooking on, um, you know, in a crock pot, you don't need to have the, the top sirloin. You might be able to get a bottom round roast. And it's just trying to, you know, get the most out of what you're, you know, out of your food budget each week. And then if you see things that are on sale, just taking advantage of that opportunity to maybe purchase some things and freeze them so you have them available for use um, at a later time. Healthy meals and snacks. Um, you know, a big thing is the batch cooking, trying to cook large amounts of foods, soups, stews, spaghettis, casseroles. And then if you're making one, why not make two or three? So if you're taking the time to make those, just pushing out and making a few more, having them in the freezer, and then you are eliminating every week spending, you know, a lot of time cooking. So if you have the ability to do that, um, it can be sometimes cheaper if you're doing that as well, if you're, you're making things in bulk. Um, that's something to think about. Also, when you're making your meal and you're bringing it out, you know, you're preparing it for the day, try to avoid those seconds and thirds because you're taking away from something that you may have budgeted for maybe lunches that week or even for another meal that week if your schedule is very busy. And then if you can, try to make in, uh, your snacks at home, um, pack your lunches at home, try to do it the night before if you, you know, find that you just don't have time in the morning. That will help keep you on track. It will give you the ability to avoid eating out, which is costly, avoid the vending machine, which is um, costs money, but it also doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of good choices in there for you. So it, not only does it help your budget, it helps you stay on track with some of your, um, with your nutritional you know, intake as well, just keeping things more healthy um, and reducing those, those unwanted calories. Just want to thank you for taking um, time from your day to attend this month's webinar. Um, you know, as you know, shown on the screen here, the My Pathway to Health does have a lot of different tools and, and educational materials available for you. You can also contact your health coach. And I just want to say this concludes this month's webinar. I hope you have a great day.